All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 410 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. Today I'm joined by St. Louis KISS Lonnie. Hey, how you doing? Uh, 69 Blizzard Cat. <laughs> Hello. I'm losing my marbles at Marcus Almighty Mark. All right, Thanks. welcome back. Today is, of course, the 30th anniversary of Kiss Revenge. We've done so many episodes on that album, including a recent quiz organized by Daniel, that we're not dedicating another full episode to this album until they drop a deluxe super, super duper edition in our laps and give us something to dissect and repontificate about. Uh, but they have dropped a whole bunch of merch celebrating the 30th anniversary on it, and it's only fair to say, Lonnie, three, two, one, go. What do you think of uh, the merch options that they're offering today? What have you bought? I'm going to go through each one of these items and get the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Your show. <laughs> um, I um, I I was excited this morning. It was it was cool that that they actually did something. I was a little worried that they wouldn't, and then last night we kind of got a little teaser that the website was going to go live um today and it did so i was excited um the silver silver colored revenge album very cool i thought it's a, a, an appropriate color i was excited that it was that um a little disappointed there wasn't a picture disc but we can't have everything i guess uh, um the shirt the shirts are cool I was hoping there would be more of a recreation of the actual tour shirts that had like the band on the front mm-hmm. and the Revenge logo on the back. It, you know, the one of the shirts does have like the Revenge logo on the back, but I was really hoping for a more a recreation of those actual tour shirts from 1992 that featured the band itself and not um, the skulls that we got. But they're still very cool. Um, coffee mug um, is cool twenty dollars for a coffee mug seems a little bit ridiculous i'm not trying to be a cheap ass but twenty dollars for a coffee mug seems a little overpriced i told my wife i go i don't know if i can spend twenty dollars on a coffee mug and she's like well is it like a tumbler I'm like no it's just like a regular coffee mug she's out like, yeah that's a bit much <laughs> so, <laughs> that being a cheap ass for 20 bucks but that's a little much um Slip it's out. cool what the slip mat. Oh, the slip mat's cool too. I kind of like that. Um, Julian, Julian had made the observation earlier in the day that it'd be, look cool on a hat or a patch or something like that. It's a pretty, it's a, it's a different design. Obviously, they didn't, they weren't using that skull or anything in '92. It's a different design. So, you know, and I get the whole, the whole skull thing's cool because it's, you know, the Statue of Liberty, you know, into the skull type thing. So it, it kind of goes with the, with you know what they were what they were doing at the time so overall i'm pleased i wish the shirts were again i wish the shirts were a recreation of of the 92 shirts but there might be some licensing rights or something with that who the hell knows so overall very happy all right so i'm going to go uh item by item uh silver lp issue i'm with you on there should have been a picture disc that would have been neat i'm afraid the silver is going to look like gray which is what the original colored vinyl through h and h collectibles looked like back in what was it 93 or 94 when those came out but uh thumbs up or thumbs down on the vinyl thumbs up um statue of liberty skull t-shirt that one with the red revenge looks badass i like that i'm yeah. i was glad that was part of the that was part of the bundle because that was the shirt I wanted right away. And I was like, oh, at least that's the one in the bundle and I don't have to buy them separately. Right. And then the kind of neon fluorescent uh, Statue of Liberty. I'm a, I'm in the middle on that one. Yeah, I didn't uh, order it. Uh, I'm, I'm not wearing the woman's wife beater tank. Mm, why not? Whatever, whatever it is. I'm not Archie <laughs> Bunker or a girl. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, you did Eat mention it. my observation. Picture disc looks badass, uh, or the uh, award <clears throat> looks badass. That For really sure. looks fantastic. Slip mat, uh, slip mat. Yeah. Very, uh, and the mugs, the mugs are always too damn small for a real coffee. No one exactly. drinks a coffee that small. <laughs> what is wrong with 15 you? ounces? This is America. We drink large coffee. 
22 ounce coffee or nothing. Um, Mark, you earned your keep. Thank you for showing all those images while we went, went through it. You know, what are the items there that stand out for you? And you are also, uh, we have a little chat going on, uh, during the day, you know, for various kiss topics, but you, you raised an interesting point as someone who would be an international customer about still being a little sketchy about ordering from Kiss Online. So what are the items that stand out and what are your concerns still? Um, well, I like the vinyl, obviously. I think it was uh, something that immediately caught my eye. I thought the bundle was actually a decent bundle and actually thought it was a pretty good price considering I was expecting it to be a lot more than what it actually was. So I thought that was a good deal. Uh, Again, if you're an American customer, then this is like right up your alley and should be pretty much a no-brainer, I would I would think. Uh, but you know, for for me, it's still, I mean, I had so many issues before with these guys. You know, I'm still a little hesitant, but I'm pondering to get the vinyl. Still, I haven't pulled the trigger yet, but I'm not expecting it to, you know, sell out immediately. This, so I think I have a day or two to think it over. Uh, the 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 gold record, I think, looks great. You know, uh, but one of my earliest things when I when I first got the Destroyer uh, gold disc, courtesy of my friends here at the FAQ here, uh, I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be hilarious to get every single one of those ones that Ezra was involved in, like get a gold disc of Revenge and then get a gold disc of the Elder, but there's not going to be a gold disc of the Elder. So that kind Such of a hater. flushed that kind of flushed my idea down the toilet there. No, they, they could but, make a brass one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, count, counterfeit gold coins in the 18th century were usually made out of brass. So there you go. True, true. They could do that. But yeah, I, th I thought the, the award was nice. Um, the t-shirts are usually nice. I mean, to, to be honest, when the Elder uh, round came out, when they started pushing that album, I bought the Oath t-shirt. And I, I loved it. I, I think it looked really cool with the axe bass and the and Paul's guitar inter, uh, intertwined like that on the front. I thought it was really cool. So the T-shirts are the things that are they're starting to kind of win me back with, because I, I'm a big T-shirt guy, right? So uh, I I love getting those things. So but you know the vinyl, I think I'm still gonna I'll probably pull the trigger, but you know maybe I just have to give myself a day or two to kind of you know convince myself that it's a good idea, and then I'll probably go from there. Yeah, so I'll say the same thing publicly that I said to you privately was, you know, I ordered the Elder picture disc and, um, well, both versions of the picture disc. And I believe that the switchover happened um, in between that order so that it was being fulfilled by whomever is now responsible for that. The picture disc arrived in bubble wrap in a proper mailer with no damage whatsoever. And Ken can attest to that because he got the cool picture disc and uh, I, I sent it on to him, um, well, via, UP, via, via UPS as well, um, I think two day, and they sent it two day UPS to me. So less time in the system than, you know, um, ordering by USPS, which, you know, if they you send media mail, it's gonna spend more time in the system simply by, by how it is. So, you know, for mm. U.S. stuff now, 17 bucks to ship uh, UPS two-day. I will probably use that a lot more shipping records um, here just because I want it to reach the person in perfect condition. But you would also get messed around with uh, import taxes, wouldn't you? And, and all that side of things, duty? Yeah, I mean, I haven't had too much issue with that. The only thing that I ever had a big trouble with that was the box set. But I've never had any issue with that with individual records. So I don't know if it's just maybe after a certain price point that happens or. Right. So, so we're going to, we're find out because the, mm -hmm. the winner of the elder picture disc that we offered up in the last show is in Canada, Edmonton. Mm -hmm. So they're going to find out. Do I only put 15 buck value on it anyway? Because it's a, a, mm -hmm. and a gift. So hopefully they don't get shafted with a, a, a vat man like they would if it was going to England. Okay. Yeah. Ken, you've been so patient sitting there diligently thinking listening. about your thoughts. <clears throat> um, what's the voice of reason got to say about each of these merch? items announced yeah this i mean the silver vinyl is fine i think that's that's good uh i mean it's kind of uh i think probably pretty obvious um, i think we 
probably came up with that when we talked about colored vinyl a long, long time ago. But uh, that, that's fine. I mean, back in the, well, the 90s, they did the <laughs> two, the blue marble and the gray marble mm -hmm. is what the ones were. Um, uh, otherwise, you have, you know, your standard black, of course. Uh, so, yeah, silver's fine. That's good. Um, the shirt, the main shirt, the regular shirt, the one we saw with the straight on shot of the um Statue of Liberty head that's a good one I like that shirt I, and I, the, the thing is I don't know about that that one with you know what, what is the deal with the middle finger you know it's like you know I I would not get that shirt I mean I would maybe get that shirt if it was a fist instead um but th they didn't have to you know do the middle finger thing on that other shirt so I just it's I just so cool that's all I hear. <clears throat> yeah, it's, yeah. When you're I just don't get it yeah if you yeah exactly uh, rebellious and all that stuff um otherwise yeah I, I mean i'm with you guys on the other stuff is is pretty you know it's okay uh you know the mug is good but it's yeah small and, and that sort of they don't have a lot of things i thought maybe they have a patch or maybe a couple other things right yeah, even a keychain yeah. with that, I with thought that maybe slip a lithograph, like some of the some of the some of the ones yeah. recently have had a had like a lithogra lithograph and that wasn't there, so I was a little disappointed in that. Should have done like a model where you could build this that statue of Liberty, you know, part of the stage Ooh. and and have that. You know, that'd be that'd be cool. Kissreplicas.com. I hope you're listening yeah. because they've just it's announced the, the Sammy the Serpent. A transformer, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you, die, have well, you remember those die cast metal car kits that you could get in the yeah. they were popular yeah. in the seventies. They're oh, yeah. horrendous to build, uh, for me anyway. Yeah. Um yeah. So I, I was a little disappointed that the Germans weren't there, you know, with a half speed master double forty five LP with metallic foil printed cover. <laughs> with, yeah. and, and this is what I've been listening to all day, the Argentine uh cassette, which has a yes. slightly different mix of some of the songs. It's my good so I actually need to do a one ninety two rip on it now. I've got some new sound gear. Um but that's the one I've listened to. I've actually I've listened to Revenge. And all the bonus secret bonus tracks, um, like six times today. It's it's nuts. I never listened to Revenge that much. I started, you know, feeling like I was Lonnie. I was supposed to go out jogging or something. I, <laughs> I took that first step, and my knee gave out, and I said, "Forget it, it's Lonnie." So, you know, I think it's well done, which is cool. Um, moving on from well done into maybe not so well done. Other news hitting today is the mm. first clip from the Neil Bogart biopic, mm. Spinning Gold, and it, of course, fe well, it features Aerosmith and Kiss. It yeah. features, uh, I think, Neil telling Steven Tyler to piss off uh, from the stage, which I guess is supposed to be Kobo, 74, because that's the only time Stephen would have been anywhere near the stage other than New Jersey, um, which is a full arena, absolutely packed with people with Kiss Army <laughs> logos mm -hmm. and all sorts of inconsistencies, and they're playing rock and roll all night in 74. So <laughs> it, it's clearly taking a whole bunch of artistic license. But I said it in the thread, that scene of them on stage where you're actually looking from behind watching them perform is pretty cool versus I my hate for Detroit Rock City and that concert sequence. And then the camera comes around to their faces. Mark, lead us off. Oh, honestly, when, when I when I saw this clip, like when you sent it over in the thread there, or in our, in our chat, I thought at first it was some kind of spoof thing, like a mad TV thing. Because uh, I was like looking at it, like what the hell like what did it look at that makeup it wasn't even remotely close like it, that's what threw me off at first because that's why I asked you I go is this supposed to be is this like a legitimate movie and you're like yes this has been in the works for a long time like wow okay because that makeup was dreadful I mean I I, I don't understand I mean if they're showing the Kiss logo on the stage. Because so the, my first thought was maybe they're not using the makeup because it's some kind of like copyright infringement thing that they can't use it. But then that would be the same thing for the logo, right? They're not they couldn't use the logo too then. So why are they doing one thing correctly and the other stuff? I, I didn't get. I was like really mind scrambled on that, and that too. And when, when they were showing like the year and the 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 amount of debt and all that in '74, really that much? Like I don't know. There, there was a lot of stuff that was making me kind of scratch my head. That you know. Like you said, inconsistencies to say the least. But 
you know, you can't help though but get a little bit of a little bit excited though to think that hey, there's something in the works as far as a Kiss movie. But I'll be honest, I'm not going to let one clip deter me from getting excited about it. You know, I'd like to think that maybe releasing this clip and seeing the feedback from Kiss fans well, might make them say, okay, well maybe we need to you know, fix up a bit of the things here and there and editing or whatever. But, you know, it's if, if that's already what we have to look forward to, it's going to be a bunch of people smacking their foreheads through the movie going, oh, my God, like what happened? What, what did they do? What's that? What's this? There's going to be so many people pointing things out. As a Kiss fan, we probably won't enjoy it. But as a, a Joe average, like if I was to bring my sisters or something to this, not my old sis, older sister, but my younger sisters, if I brought them to watch it, they would probably enjoy it because they have no idea of all the details and the minutia, right? So, but us Kiss fans, I have a feeling we're going to be pointing out every five minutes, you know, I can see a guy in the theater already going, that's not right. What did, why are they doing that? You know, it's going to be nothing but that through the whole movie, I bet you. It's going to trigger a bunch of Kiss fans, and that is awesome. <laughs> um, you know, the numbers, Casablanca math is alive and well. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, you go to the, the the poster promo that's out, and it's featuring the music of Donna Summer. George Clinton's Parliament? Really? <laughs> it was always Parliament Funkadelic <laughs> and then Parliament, <laughs> um, you know, it, back, back in the 70s. KISS, the logo is changed because it is a registered trademark, uh, you know, covered by all that stuff that costs a lot of money if you use it wrong. Same as the makeup. Um, Gladys Knight, well, it was always Gladys Knight and the Pips, Pips. on the Casablanca <clears throat> label, uh, label, if I recall. And we're the village people. And Neil, the, you know, it's a biopic about Neil, but I think this is going to be kind of like Def Leppard meets The Dirt uh, in terms of really bad uh, <laughs> biopics. Lonnie, your thoughts? Yeah, it. I I, I was kind of the, sh the ship with Mark at first when I saw it, and I'm like, at first, I was like, what is this? Is this like, and then I was like, oh no, this is that Neil Bogart thing that they've been <laughs> teasing for years and years and years. I guess it's finally happening. But why? I mean, obviously, the first thing was, why does the makeup look like that? I mean, and you, you can say what you want. Like, well, the hard, I, I, the hardcore Kiss fans are going to have a problem with it. I think the average just music fans would be like, well, that's not what they look like. That's not what their makeup yeah. looks like. It'd be, just the average fan knows what those four characters look like. Why did they make such a big deal about keeping Aces and Peter's makeup? Because everybody knows those four faces and we're not using them. So I, 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 I couldn't, I, I couldn't, and I still can't wrap my head around that. And I understand that it's a money thing, but isn't this what the movie's about though? I mean, let, let's pay for that licensing fee. If we're going to do a movie about Neil Bogart and him signing kiss is what it's, it's what the trailer looked like, so I, I don't I don't understand it. And just from the minute and a half clip that we had, we had so many issues with it. I can't imagine um, what an hour and a half to two hours is going to look like if that's what we've gotten out of a minute and a half. It's kind of scary. Yeah, and uh, fans are already going through it, and um, the green screen is really bad. Half of Gene Simmons disappears. The keying is so off. Um, all sorts of problems with it, uh, apart from the CGI smoke and, and everything. But uh, this is, it feels like it's straight to reels. And I think it's more a labor of love by Tim to get it made because this thing's been in development for so long. So many people have been attached to it from Justin Timberlake. And now you read the list of actors and I'm like, who? And they have their, uh, their, their accomplishments. And I'm like, who? What? Uh, you know, I know I don't watch a lot of TV, so I'm really uncurrent when it comes to stuff because I, I like the 80s better. Um, but it's just, it is bad, but I do look forward to seeing it because I want to see the spin that they put on Neil Bogart and Casablanca. Clearly, we've already seen Cecil Holmes. Uh, and I want to see some of the characters that we've read about in ha Larry Harris's book, uh, you know, come to life a little bit and see what uh the people who remember those real those people what they have to say rather than us okay, uh, so going nuts what have, what what did they change with that logo it looks like the same logo to me looks squished 
Like it's uh, just been elongated enough for them to be able to say with no outline in some cases that no, it is not the KISS logo. You know, mm. I've, I pulled some similar things on they, logos, they also, on covers. They, they also uh, changed the KISS Army uh, logo that was on the, the kid's shirt right. next to the bus. Um, that was different too. Yeah, there was no Kiss Army in '74 either. Look at, look at, like, look at the gene in this. Like, come on, look at that. Who plays Bill Starkey? I wonder. Because if if he's not in there. So, All right, Ken, go. Your thoughts. Well, yeah, I, like I said on the on the forum, I said you know this is you know very, very interesting. <laughs> it, was, it was it was interesting. Um, yeah, the I, I don't I don't know about the makeup. They, they, they didn't want to pay for it. The rights to use it or or kiss read the script and said you're not going to use our makeup in that <laughs> movie you know the, something like that happened um otherwise i i don't i don't really get it i mean maybe the budget is just so small on that uh, film which it probably is uh that they had were cutting corners um and and cutting part of gene off i guess <laughs> using the green screen the way they did it but uh the other thing is uh i was looking at the, the makeup on Jean of like, you know, if you look at it, it looks more like Velvet Von Ragnar uh, <laughs> to me. That's what that's what he looks like. <clears throat> that's what the guy looks like. Is it looks like Velvet Von Ragnar, you know? Um, but yeah, and then the music is obviously uh, somebody recorded a Rock and Roll All Night, some some band or some studio musicians. Um, yeah, I mean, you know what? Kiss is probably not going to be that much in it. We probably saw most of what Kiss is going to be in the movie. It's going to be probably more about, right, the behind the scenes, Neil Bogart and trying to, you know, deal with the, you know, the company and the, the record labels. The and mob. What if the mob will feature in this? Maybe the mob, yeah, and, and all, all that kind of stuff um, behind the scenes. And we'll just get little snips of like Kiss and then Donna Summer and and so on, um, so yeah, I mean, I think it'll be an interesting uh, movie to watch it, uh, see what, how they, uh, you know, uh, how the story goes and so on. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's this is not a Kiss biopic; it's a Neil Bogart biopic, and it's going to be mostly about that stuff. Yeah, why would they pay Kiss a fat licensing fee to use the logo and the makeup when they'd probably have to cede some artistic control in it as part of the arrangement? So they're not going to use and Kiss music. That costs money. It's cheaper to get someone yeah, else to, to record it. Half the mm -hmm. people who are going to watch this are not even going to know that the Kiss logo is wrong. Or even the makeup, some of them are like, oh, it looks a little different than that. But, you know, oh, that might be right. You know, <laughs> see who knows. Yeah. All right, so so enough of that. Let's get back to quality because Bruce <laughs> Kulik dropped his Thirty Years of Revenge uh, YouTube recap, and you know, first of all, I, I heard that he was on Eddie Trunk today, and he mentioned Kiss facts, and <clears throat> whether he was saying F A C T S uh, rather than F A Q. If he was alluding to our site, then thank you, Bruce, for mentioning it. Uh, I hope the context nice. was good. I have no idea what was said. I was just uh, told that. So, uh, Lonnie. Did you have a chance to watch Bruce's video? It's only 11, well, just 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched it last night. Um, I thought it was really cool. Um, him just going through um, the different guitars that he used on the album. And, you know, he he is the card-carrying member of this era of the band and really, you know, carries the flag for the non-makeup era because, you know, that, that's who he is. So... He, he's really proud of it, and you can tell that he's always sung revenge, Revenge's praises. And I thought it was really cool, just the way he went through and talked about song for, song by song a little bit, talked about Eric Carr a little bit, um, just talked about the different the different guitars and the different um, equipment he was using to, to do those recordings and just to, well, sit there and watch him just play along with the album, you know, snippet by snippet. Um, really cool, just a cool little... Um, tribute to um some of his proudest and some of his um i think it's his pr i think it's the proudest work that he has for what he's done in the band i think he talks about it more than more than any other work that he did so um it was it was very well done yeah i'm very appreciative of the effort bruce has put into this obviously i i really dug his guitar playing on on the couch 
you know, getting the mm -hmm. uh, Banana ESP out as well, because that just draws it into that guitar, you know, is thought of as a Crazy Nights guitar. And I've always said that if you peel back the polish on Crazy Nights, it's the same guitarist with the same attitude playing some pretty good riffs there. They're not as forward and in your face on Crazy Nights as they are with Bob's production and some of the FX that uh, Bruce was using on Revenge. But the tools are all there and, and you get to see a whole bunch of different guitars and it, it, you know I, I know his guy who puts this together you know will put a lot of effort into it but it is appreciated bruce taking the time he's such a good narrator of the story as well which you know it, it's very calming it's a you know a meditation moment with unholy i mean come on that's just so that's so weird ken what are your thoughts on it yeah i mean i enjoyed it yeah it's short um but yeah it's very you know uh you know, to the point and and uh, explains that era and and you know the making of the album and I, I do the best parts is uh, Bruce sitting on the you know the couch playing the you know guitar solos and and so on and um, I have to thank Bruce for uh, there's an image in there I used for my Facebook front page that I snipped from uh, that that video which is said had Revenge 30th anniversary and it had the band and and so on um i grabbed that uh, snapshot of that and put it on my front page but um yeah it's it's cool and and cool to hear some of the the uh the sounds of you know uh pinpointed uh vocals without you know uh without anything else instruments behind it or or just the, you know this or that um which is pretty pretty cool to hear that kind of stuff because Bruce still has those uh, tapes uh, from when he was recording, uh, so he's able to you know use that music. Um, so yeah, it's really good. Uh, it's a nice little tribute, uh, self you know, tribute to Revenge. Yeah, so Bruce might get a kick out of this. Uh, thank you, Mark, for showing all those. But just before I, I move to you, uh, the new Pole Star Venue Guide is uh, out and uh, Nibbler. Rest in peace, dude. Um, it's got all the stats on all the venues. It's what I use to reference. Uh, I've got them all throughout the years. But if you open it up, <coughs> guess who's on the inner cover? Oh, very cool. Grand yeah. Funk. <laughs> yep. And, and they were also on the back cover of the last issue of Paul Starbert one out. You know, it's just nice to see Bruce still being featured in magazines. He's but that ad's been in like three issues of Paul Star now, which is more <laughs> than Kiss gets any mention for. So Bruce nice uh mark thanks again for showing all the video while we were talking uh, what are your thoughts on on bruce's tribute i really really enjoyed it i'm i'm a big bruce supporter i remember the very first time i came on this podcast you asked me what my favorite member of kiss was and it was bruce kulik then and it still is now <clears throat> um i think that he really knows how to talk about the things that i think kiss fans are interested in and he's especially good at talking about the things that guitar players are interested in, I think, because that whole breakdown of the gear that they used and stuff like that, that really was right up my alley. I was like to totally like focused and, you know, you could have dropped a, you know, I don't know, you could have dropped something beside me. I probably wouldn't even have noticed, you know? <clears throat> so, uh, but the guitar playing was fantastic. Uh, also on Bruce Kulik's website, there's like a written version of something similar to this uh, on there as well maybe a little bit more detailed as far as like written stuff but he has one also for uh i think asylum and some of the other albums he talks about the makings of and stuff like that and the gear as well so it's, if you want more details there's more of that on his actual site but this video was really good uh you know it was interesting that they showed the uh and then new marshall jcm 900 amp i had that exact same amp for the longest time I had it and uh, I ended up changing it for a 5150 later on because I just, well, it wasn't heavy enough for the music that I was doing. But for that type of stuff, it was perfect, you know, for like revenge kind of stuff and, you know, hard rock stuff. It was, it's a, it's a great amp. And when you combine it with like, you know, the, the overdrive pedals and, you know, the compressors and the crybabies, I mean, that, that album, his whole soloing sound is based around that 900 amp, you know, a, a tube screamer and that Vox Crybaby wah pedal there. 
it's like every solo I think that he sh he showed there, for the exception of maybe one, he was using that wah pedal on there. So that's really lambasted all over the album. And it was really cool though too that he showed that it wasn't only just ESPs and these kind of cool, you know, metal type guitars. He also showed a three 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 thirty five guitar as well uh, on there as well. That Gibson, that's a great guitar, and you know, obviously for something like Domino, it was absolutely a perfect sound for that. It's a shame that some guitars get pigeonholed as like metal guitars, ESPs, and obviously I use my Jacksons more for that kind of playing as well. I liked watching his finger patterns, you know, playing some of that stuff. It's always interesting to watch the guy who actually wrote the solos play them and just see how yeah. effortly, effortless it is when you're trying to replicate some of them sometimes from a tab or a chord, um, you know, book. So, you know. Uh, we we touched on this briefly before uh, when we we're talking about some of the new revenge merch. Um, someone who suggested that there should be a replica of the Statue of Liberty as a transformer or or die Ken. Ken. model Ken. or something. That, yeah. that, that that was Ken. So Ken, did you see the Sam T Serpent and more as coming to Creatures Fest like Kiss replicas? They're they're about ready to release uh, a new yeah. I mean a new uh, what is it life size? Yeah, yeah, life size. It's you know, that's cool that they they're doing something like that. I mean, that's always, and that's that's just like the like the original replica, you know, uh, Sam T. Serpent, right? Yeah, so the official replica, the official <laughs> replica, the real thing. Um, uh, it's it's cool to see it because I you know I never saw I see it on pictures and and you know uh, videos and stuff, but I never got to see that you know live. Uh, it was gone by Dynasty, you know, tour. So uh, yeah, that's cool to, is that they do. They're doing some of those, you know, neat things, uh, replicating, you know, the history or history of the past. But yeah, it's a nice thing to actually. Some people are going to be able to, you know, to check out and look at in person. If it's a coat rack, I'd be in. Uh, Lonnie, Sam, <laughs> Sam T. Serpent, you got to get one for your bengos, Lair. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I need a a Sam T. Serpent replica, but it's. You know, to each their own. I think that's cool. You know, if that's what you want, but you know, it, it's 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 different. You know, I there, there's there's something for everyone, I guess. You know, but I don't, I don't know if I necessarily need that at this point. But I'm I'm sure there'll be plenty of Kiss fans that that think they do. I can't wait to see photos yeah. of it, you know, from Creatures Fest. You know, when when it's seen. But I think this is a whole new line of merchandise that needs to be done. Lonnie mentioned the Statue of Liberty. I think they need to do a Leon um, of, of some description yeah. in some way. It maybe it could be a cookie jar, you know, to lift the head up, and there, there, your your Oreos and your genie snacks. Um, they got they got to do the Peter's cats are back on stage for this brief. Yeah. Uh, there you go. You know, leg of the tour though. Now they're Eric's cats, of course. You know, those would be cool. Um, Either as bookends, yes, because fans can read and have books, but they, they'd be cool with little glow in the dark eyes. That'd be nice. Mark, any of those kind of things uh, float your boat, or you're like, whatever, shut up, let's go to another topic. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's cool. I mean, it's definitely, uh, if you're a big collector of those kind of items, which I'm sure there's some people within the Kiss circle of collectors that would be probably very interested in that. I'm not one of them. I'm not into those kind of large dollar items like that uh but you know if you look if you're a tribute band and you're really one of those kind of bands that want to make it like legit down to like the last detail hey this is a perfect opportunity for you to go grab one of those things that will make your stage set more legit right same with the cats too i mean that isn't uh isn't that one tribute band now that's doing the dynasty run have had they have the cats on their stage too right uh, I forget about the yeah. name of that band. Uh, Mr. Speed. Mr. Speed, that's it. Yeah, they have the cat. I think they even have the Mr. Serpent there too, I think, on stage. I think, or maybe not. But uh, if it's a dynasty, I don't think they have that on there. But, you know, but still, if you're a tribute band and you're wanting to make your stage look more legitimate, then these kind of replicas will be probably perfect for that. All right. Ken, did you opine? Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay, then, Mark, I'm going to go back to you because the new Foundations Forum 1993 Pro Shop footage that surfaced this week was pretty cool, but you were there. 
mm-hmm. aren't you? Yes. So what did you think of yes. the footage? And uh, tell us about 1993. Um, it was interesting because uh, it was actually probably the very first sort of musical uh, convention that I attended, like outside of Canada. Like me and my friend, we, we bought tickets. I remember we, we saw ads for it for months before. And we're like, we should go check this out, you know, because there was a bunch of people that were going to be there that we were into. So we we would, we flew down and we checked it out. And uh, when we heard that Kiss were going to be playing there at that, we were like, really? Like we, we, we were like kind of like surprised because it wasn't, it wasn't floating around the parts like in the, within the building too much about it. And that's the thing, like I mentioned before, I found sort of odd was that th- at that time, there was very much a, let's see the new kind of up and coming bands that were out around then that were coming around. Because I know that there was, I don't remember if it was that one that I went to or if it was the year before, but uh, D. Schneider had a new band, Widowmaker, I think or something like that. Mm. And they were playing live at it. And people were much more interested in like, let's check that out. And, you know, and there was kind of the vibe of like, you know, the how the mighty have fallen when they were talking about kiss ah, kisses you know that, that we can go check it out like people were already kind of counting them out at that time and this don't forget too a lot of the people that were at this or a lot of industry people too right they weren't exactly like general public fans off the street right there were there were that too but it was a lot more like you know schmoozers and brown nosers and stuff like that, you know, hanging out and, you know, you, you, it was one of those conventions where you walk in and they give you this huge, like, you know, the, the bag of courtesy products, like that's like face weighs 50 pounds in there, you know, that because, you know, you're, you paid your $200 to get in or whatever. Um, and it was an interesting performance though. I mean, the thing that I thought immediately that was interesting about it was that they played going blind. They, they had not, I think at that point ever had played that live. I don't think, I think Paul even mentions it in the video that this is the first time they had ever played it. And, you know, the performance was good. You know, Eric Singer was on drums. So, of course, it was, you know, pretty powerful. And uh, But but it was an interesting vibe. It was nothing, let's put it this way, it was nothing like going to a KISS concert. You know, when you go to a KISS show, the place is electric and people are jumping up and down and going crazy. Here, it was like the first couple of rows of people were kind of like, you know, cheering and getting into it. And the rest of it were these guys, like arms folded, watching, and then just kind of talking to each other. Going, yeah, that, yeah, I remember that song. You know, the wow, that's '77. That song, that's a long time. Like it's that kind of vibe that was going on there. So it was an interesting thing to witness. But uh, you know, look, Kiss had the last laugh a few years later, right? Yep, I guess so. So you know, obviously the revenge era is powerful, and I think that's what I get out of it. You know, seeing a nice upgrade of that that footage just reminds me how great that period was. Mm-hmm. Lonnie, uh, bring back memories for you. Yeah, the exact same. It just rem- reminds you how great that period was, how good that band sounded live. Um, that you know, we you know we we've seen you know some different footage from from the 92 through 95 era. I, I just love, I love seeing any show from that era period. Cause I think the band is just so tight. I think it's the most talented they ever were. And you know, it, it it's, it, it's why it's my go-to era of the band there. They were so great live. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, that, and it's really showcased there just, just how great it was. And it's as much as, you know, a live three to me just doesn't capture that, and and I understand why they made a live three when they did because they were great, they sounded great. I understand, like you know what, let's do a live album now because this sounds great, and it, it just unfortunately to me it just didn't translate um, what those live performances really were. So if I can get my hands on anything just you know raw from from that era, I I just I soak it all up. Yeah, those bootlegs from the era, whether it's Tokyo, Santiago, you know. That's a good one. They just blow a live three itself out of the water. Um, it's just, it's like the crazy nights of Kiss live albums. It's just polished the edge off it a bit too much. Um, and you've lost all that grit and grime that really should permeate the sound. Ken. Yeah, I mean, it was a great era. Um, I, I 
I know I've seen some of the footage before um, in the past, um, but I, yeah, this has looked a little better um, and it sounded pretty good. Uh, and yeah, they they were they were top notch back then. Um, and uh, you know, I was lucky enough to see them. You know, you know, a couple few times, whatever back then. So uh, they were a very tight band, like you know you said, and and uh, and you know it's a forgotten. You know, people forget about how good they were back then um, as a band, and you know without the makeup and without the that a lot of the fireworks and that sort of stuff, you know, mm-hmm. uh, still. And they they just, they they didn't need it so much because they were so good uh, back then. They didn't really need all that extra stuff um, because they were performing that well and, and had a lot of great music that they were playing. So, yeah, it was cool to see. Can, uh, can I say just one last thing about that, though, uh, about that show in particular? One thing I got to give them huge props for, is the fact that that was not their crowd and they played so well. You know, it was it's difficult sometimes to play to a crowd that's not yours, you know, when you're expecting a certain reaction at the end of a song and you're just not getting it. You're getting it from like 15 or 20 people. Mm-hmm. It, to kind of be able to still put on a great show like they did on that, I think you got to, that just shows the level of professionalism that they have. Yeah, they, they were still at a point in their careers that they were willing to win over an audience, or if not, uh, steamroller the audience. Yeah, you don't yeah. care. You're mm-hmm. not. A, this isn't our audience. This we'll isn't our you. crowd. Well, we love it loud, and we're gonna, you know, keep on going. But great, great performance. It's really nice when upgrade footage does come out like that, yeah. and you get to, uh, you know, have a peek of something or revisit something that you've seen previously on a crappy VHS or a lower grade. Um, yeah, YouTube upload. All right, got some topics from the board. Oh, Ken, was that enough revenge um, content for you today? You know, because originally my uh, my guy didn't have much in it, did it? Oh, I mean, I just you know, it's, you know, it's the anniversary, so I thought, hey, it's got to have a little bit of revenge, right? Yeah, I, but as an episode, we just did I'm, I'm like, what the hell can we do as another revenge episode? Uh, you know, talk about the harmonica playing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or or oh, Dick Wagner, that. you know. <laughs> All right, so we got a couple of topics on the board to, to talk about today, and there's a, it, sometimes you just kind of roll your eyes, uh, especially with how they're phrased. What is what? a bigger fraud? Creatures of the night or psycho circus? Fraud! Call the police. I'm going to dial 711 and report a musical fraud by. They'll be like, yes, sir, kiss again. <clears throat> My money back. Yeah. Um, Mark, first of all, do you consider either of them a fraud? And if so, which one is the bigger fraud? Well, I mean, being, you know, knowing what I know now in the business, I I would consider them neither of them really a fraud because, you know, this kind of stuff happens all the time on many records, probably some records you probably don't even know about. I mean, I remember the first time I heard that, you know, Blackout by the Scorpions was played by people that were not even the Scorpions, like the whole album. I was like, what? You know, that really kind of opened my eyes to stuff, you know, to think that, what? The, the drummer and the bass player didn't play anything on Blackout? Like, that's, that's impossible. But, hey, it happens, right? But I think Creatures, to me, is not a, a sort of crime against music because look at they were they were well in doing it by that time they had done it on live too they had done it on other things for dynasty as well they needed a session drummer and blah 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 so look they were going through a transition period at that time as well the fact that they had such a great album come out of it i think is absolutely fantastic it's still one of my favorite records of all time to me though psycho circus is more of a crime against music because they were promising a return to you know kiss proper and you know, we're we're back, the four of us, and you know, they were really pushing it that it was gonna be them doing it. And of course, we got nothing like that at all from Psycho Circus. I think that to me is is more of a crime. And maybe it's also more of a crime to me because I just think the album is just weak in general. I think there's only like one or two good songs off of that record, you know? So I I think that's more of a crime. Creatures, no way. You can't put that in the same category. Lonnie, fraud or fiction? Um Creatures isn't a fraud. I think I think that it's kind of amazing with the transition that they were experiencing at the time and the turmoil they were in at the time that they were able to crank out 
one of the best Kiss albums there is, in my opinion. Um, yes. Is Ace Frilly on the cover? Yes. But it's not like... To me, it's like the song credits don't feature Ace Frehley or anything like that. They're not really trying to... I know he's on the cover, but it's not Ace Frehley credit for writing this song. Ace Frehley credit for writing that, that song. And you'd be like, oh, okay, well, yeah, it's obviously Ace Frehley. He's on the cover, sure. But that album wasn't promoted as Ace Frehley and Eric Carr, you know, pound the fist, like Ace Frehley and Eric Carr lineup type <clears throat> that we yeah. got with um the reunion tour with, with psycho circus i mean that album was promoted as the reunion album the album you've been waiting to hear since dynasty you know this this album should have been the follow-up to love gun i remember hearing things like that and and that that's how it was promoted that's what they were saying on interviews i remember listening to rock line oh, i think it wasn't rock line but it was a show right before Psycho Circus came out and the four of them were on and they were playing some songs off the album. And like, I remember, I remember distinctly them playing a hundred thousand years and Gene going, I like the end of a hundred thousand years right there where Peter goes on the drums and goes, and like, just like, just really just putting it in my, like really trying to make everybody believe that it's all, that it's the four of them on this album. So I say yes. And Mark, you gotta have a hot take on this show. Come on. You kids can't give, you, you gotta have some, you, you gotta say yes if something's a fraud, you know. Um, I say yes, Psycho Circus is a fraud, and I and Mark said there's one, maybe two good songs on there. I think two is being generous. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm, I say Psycho Circus is a fraud. Yeah, I will never get over the choice to use Bruce Fairburn for that album. He was passed. <laughs> his usefulness for Aerosmith by that point had been right. shit canned by them. Talk about being five years behind the curve of hopping on trends. Bon Jovi was 86. You know, what had Bruce done? But, you know, as a fraud, Creatures is not. Creatures is just Kiss putting out a Kiss album as best as they could put out a Kiss album as much as Dynasty or Unmass, as Mark said. You know, session players come into bands, it happens. It, it simply is part of the business. Someone ain't doing it or ain't available. Well, it goes back to the beginnings of KISS. It was never about the individual. But Psycho Circus was false advertising from the get-go. For God's sake, they paid Peter and Ace not to participate and thus missed the whole object of the exercise. If you could, if you could turn back time for Kiss for one thing, it would be that reunion album and to just lock them in a room with Eddie or Bob and have Peter bring in the ideas that he had and work on them. Whether it's with Bob, whether it's with, you know, other band members, if they didn't feel they were up to scratch or let him do the songs and craft them like you've heard the rehearsal takes of Baby Driver and Dirty Living. You know, there's only one fully formed song that ever came in to Kiss, as far as I'm aware, from Peter, and that is Hooligan. The demo is nearly the same, and he and Stan wrote that together. So even Beth needed quite a bit of work. But it would be much more honest just to say, we're going to soldier through this. Screw contracts for that one album. It's a missed opportunity, as is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But I would only turn back time in order to fix Psycho Circus and have Ace be able to bring in the songs that he wants. But the same thing applies. It was a missed opportunity for Gene to write with Ace again or for Paul and Peter rather than the shit sandwich that it was. So it's not only a fraud, but it's a non-believable one now that we've scraped the makeup out of all the, the scars. And we can mm. see it for what it really is. And, and the truth is ugly underneath <clears throat> for what that is. Because if you're willing to pay them not to participate, was it really worth that cost? Because that, they probably got paid more than the album generated, which is uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. probably the most shocking part. All right, Ken, give us the voice of reason. Yeah, no. I mean, they, they've been doing it since this kind of stuff, since what Destroyer, I guess. Um <laughs> Uh, where, where there's other musicians and so on. Yeah, I mean, the uh, Creatures of the Night, the only thing fraud about that is is the album cover itself. That's that's about it. I mean, they, yeah, they probably should have had Vinny on the, on the cover, like the bootleg 
that's out there. Um, otherwise, um, it's not fraudulent. Um, yeah, I, I agree. It's Psycho Circus is, is a big problem. You know, just the four members getting back and, and recording some good old time kiss music from the 70s, you know, <laughs> going back. It's so far from that type of music and sound. Um, and you're talking about the producer. Shoot, yeah, they needed Bob Ezrin or Kramer on that one for sure. Um, yeah, put your egos and money aside and just get, you know, they should have been just gotten into the room and, and, and you know, fleshed it out. I bet you they would have put out something. I, I guarantee they would have put out something better than Psycho Circus, the album itself. Sure, oh, Psycho honest. Circus. Yeah, sure, sure. Psycho Circus mm -hmm. came out, you know, the song. And who knows if that would have been still been written by Paul or not, uh, the theme or, or whatever. Maybe it would have been. Um, but I think it would have been more cohesive and and uh, sounded more like a Kiss album than than it does. So, there you yeah. Go. So, yeah, kind of fraudulent. <laughs> yeah, very sad. Very sad. The, thousand, the thousands of tears of KISS fans, because I think yes. it didn't it didn't just steal from KISS fans. It also stole from Ace and Peter and Gene and Paul. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone wins in this situation other than keeping them off the album to make a point that you, you're working for us now, that I'm the boss and don't you ever... I had a boss who actually once said that, I'm the boss and don't you ever forget it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, well, even if there are patients dying, do you you want me to wait for you to confirm what I could have already done and saved the life? So don't get snippy with me, Mister. Gosh. Yes. All right. Good let's uh, let's move on to uh, to. Uh, I, I don't know if this was a board topic, but it doesn't matter. It probably was. Addicted to Gene's demos. Gene demo. What's the first Gene demo that popped into your head when I said that, Lonnie? Addicted to Gene's demos. Um, Mad Dog is one of the first ones that pops into my head. It's one of the more classic ones, I guess. You know, I guess I think about things like that. I think about, um, you know, there's there's some stuff from the solo album that I think of right away, too. The, so, the solo stuff from 78 is what I think of more than anything else. Probably those. Those are what I think of more than anything else. And I think of Gene's demos. Um, that obviously he had brought them in for some albums um, prior to his solo album and just ended up using them for that. Um, you know, Gene, Gene's good at, Gene, you know, had much, had, obviously has much different writing style than Paul did. Paul would be very um, focused on what he wanted, where Gene would just, you know, almost write anything and just throw it against the wall and see what sticks. So there's, there's a lot of variety when it comes to Gene's demos. But the first thing I think about, though, is I think about, you know, his, his solo stuff from 78 more, more than anything. Although there's obviously from the vault, there's a there's a ton of shit out there. Yeah, and I think the ton of stuff that's Gene related that wasn't on the vault means that it's probably Kiss related. It may have been Correct. saved for that. At least I hope so. Mark, Gene demo. What pops into your head? Uh, well, you know, quite a few of the similar ones that I think Lonnie mentioned, like Mad Dog and Rock and Rolls Royce and stuff like that. But the one that really jumped out at me when he just said it right now was I remember my reaction when I heard the Domino one the first time. I was like, well, wait a minute. Because uh, I remember finding out after that it was just that band, I think Silent, was it Silent Rage or something yep. that did the backing track and it's just him singing over top of it. And I was kind of like, wait a minute. This is like, you know, he's he's taking credit that he wrote this song. And meanwhile, it's a completely different band who like perform this. You know, I don't know. Back then, I was very, you know, very much uh, against that kind of idea. Like, you know, getting taking credit for you know someone else's performance. You know, even though he maybe have wrote the song, right? <clears throat> but I was always kind of like of the thinking naively, obviously, that you know, Gene did the demo himself. You know. And the, the thought of another band doing it for him and him just singing it was kind of like had a bad taste in my mouth from that. But, you know, like you said, you, you learn things as you, you know, go through the, the world and you learn things when you get through the business a bit and you learn things about just how things work. And, you know, that that's something that I think is pretty commonplace in the music business that somebody s submits a song, they listen to it 
I like that. Send me just the backing tracks. I'll try to write something over top of it completely different or some different version of it. And there it is. There's a song and I, they either purchase it or they give writing credits and there you go. But that, that song always kind of, you know, not ticked me off, but it kind of like bothered me that, you know, I thought it was, I thought Gene was much more involved in that song because it seems to be such a Gene song when you hear it on Revenge. He's like, if you were to ask me besides Unholy, what song on that album screams gene simmons i would say domino you know and to think that he maybe didn't have as much input in that song as i thought kind of bugs me a bit yeah it wouldn't be the first time a kiss song has less input from kiss than you Mm -hmm. maybe (laughs) may have thought can yeah yeah when when i this topic came out that i which is kind of current to me i thought of you know love is blind uh, which is, you know, the the original demo, and then the the Shameless is doing that, you know, that, and I I ordered that uh, CD recently um, mm-hmm. from them, so I'm looking forward to getting that. And uh, so, but you know, I think of a lot, of, <laughs> so many demos. Uh, I, I, you know, think start thinking of other ones and, and so on, the ones with you know Van Halen with him and and that sort of stuff, and and then. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I I do agree that yeah, he probably had some session players on these this and that um, for some of his demos. But I think there are there are demos out there. He did his own, you know, he did mm. do them all himself too, um, from what I understand. So, you know, whatever, it, it happens. Um, but yeah, Love Is Blind is the one. It was kind of been going around lately. Anyway, it's kind of been the out on the forum and that sort of stuff. Yeah, and that's probably why when I, you know, set the topic as well, I, I didn't go with Love is Blind, but a very similar song, uh, It's Gonna Be All Right. Mm. And again, that comes back to some of the other side of Gene Simmons, which I find really interesting. I, I don't think he respects himself enough as a songwriter. He's got some good stuff there that does get muddled in with all the other shit he's trying to make stick sometimes. But he does have some songs that from the get-go you know, see you tonight. Love is blind. Um, you know, it's going to be all right. Um, you know, there, there's a couple of others. You know, that he did around the time of a mass, which just leave me pondering why on earth um, you're all that I want ended up on there. And I think it's probably <laughs> yeah. because of the co-writer credit. Um, you know, so there's so, there's so much good stuff from Gene. So it's nice to see a, a topic about. Um, you know, Gene's demos. I want to end with uh, something non-KISS related. Mark, Project Gemini, what's going on? It's been a few weeks since you were on an episode, I think. Yeah, well, uh, just recently I got the, uh, the the test acetate for the vinyl. I picked mm-hmm. it up. I'll be listening to it tonight uh, to give it the final listen through. And if uh, all things are good on it, then uh, I contact Lacquer Channel, tell them that it's good. They make the proper final version of it. It gets sent off to make the metal parts and the pressing of the album will begin. And of course, the the thing that people need to keep in mind is that when I tell him it's okay to do it, he still has to coordinate with Train Records and the other places to make sure that he does the proper acetate at at an appropriate time because he doesn't want to make it and let it just sit there for weeks and weeks and weeks and then have the metal parts made out of it because then it's not as good quality. He'd rather have it so that there's a couple of days in between at most and then have them work on it. So this is a timing thing, but as long as I'm okay with it, he'll have everything you know, set as far as any kind of recall for settings and stuff like that to do the proper uh, version of it. But I mean, it's interesting just really quickly, one other thing that I found just to give you guys a better idea of uh, this, gap in the music business i picked up recently an album called uh from a band called world trade billy sherwood of yes was that was his band before you joined the yes community and they released an album called euphoria back in the 90s and they reissued it and i and i saw kevin the guy who does my lacquer stuff i saw his initials in the dead wax of the album and i go hey did you cut this album for them and he goes, and he said to me, World Trade. He goes, yeah, I think I might have done that. And he went back to his record. He goes, yeah, I got got that. Now, remember, this is in May now. 
Okay, and I just got the record like last week. He goes, yeah, I did the I did that in November last year. So by the time he did that, and it went to to press, it was like five months after it was done. So when you're sitting at home and you're ordering your records and wondering what the hell's taking so long, everybody has this problem now. Like even known bands that are signed to major labels have to wait and wait and wait for stuff because there's such a huge lineup of stuff. Except for Metallica and their Walmart exclusive 11 yeah. LP uh, collection for 160 bucks, if, if that's your thing. <laughs> All right, that's a bunch of revenge-related topics and some topics from the board. Thank you for everyone who participates on the message board. Uh, your participation is appreciated because we do mine it for topics because it's great to see what we're talking about. It's KISS fans, so get your... Get your KISS Revenge merchandise at KISSonline.com. They better spell that person's name right on the fucking Revenge Award. Or there will be no more Hemdons, uh -oh. please. Or there will be tears and murder. So that's it for this week. From Lonnie, Mark, Ken, and myself, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.